Dan is done with chemo. Yes, which is very good. Thank fucking um, God. He's still feeling pretty crummy. He's going to for a couple weeks, but uh, he's done. Yeah, he's done. And things are looking good right now. Yeah. Cool. And I, I, got, I got a new thingy. <laughs> Which is still kind of itchy, so we're rocking the off-the-shoulder look. <laughs> I, you know, I get people like the tattoos, and folks have them, and that's fine. But I, I, I don't, I don't get it. Well, it's it's pretty. But it's forever. Yes, but it's pretty. Well, and I got this. Okay, so. Daisies were my mom's favorite flower. Sweet William was my father's favorite flower. And then my family was all about potatoes, but those aren't very pretty. So we did potato blossoms and shamrocks. Yeah. I, there is nothing that appeals to me enough or, or resonates with me enough to put on my flesh until I die. That's just the thing, you know, or until I get really fed up with it and go to a laser dude. But yeah. We didn't used to have fair, those. Fair for everybody. By the way, that whole laser abrasion thing, that only showed up in our lifetime. Yeah. <coughs> it used to be a tattoo was nine forever. It was like, well, nine. what do you do? Like, you have to wonder how like, like ye olde 18th century sailors and nine survived a tattoo without the antibiotics, without all that, all the knowledge of just like, yeah, I'm just going to plug you no. with nine and ink and you'll be done. Without like a brand new needle every time. In the middle of the ocean, no antibiotics. What colors will it have? Um, well, the Sweet William and Potato Blossom are both flowers that are purple and white. We're not going to do any white because I am very pale. So why? Um, <laughs> we're going to let my natural pallor be the white. Um, but it'll have some purple. The Fair middles dude. of the flowers are yellow. And then the shamrocks are green. Oh, Let's get the uh, intro rolling here. This week, it, well, let me get the intro and we'll talk about it. Um, here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this week is actually kind of mild in, in our terms, which... It's still stupid, and it's still it's still crazy, but no one has nine assault rifles and is covered in shit. You know? It's that's, I mean, that's a good week. We we're lower in the stakes back. If this if this were an anime, we would call this the beach episode. Don't worry, the kids understand. It's fine. It's okay. fine. It's the okay. kids understand. All right. Um, well, let's. Well, uh, that's not to say this stuff isn't still terrible, obviously, because it, it is actually terrible. And Florida is Florida. Where would we be without Florida? Bring this on over here. And Penella substitute teacher ousted after repeated use. Of racial slur, and you're like, which racial slur? Oh, she's going for the classics. The old N-word. That old standby. White substitute teachers out of a job after repeatedly using a racial slur at a Pinellas County school where about 75% of the students are black. Karen Bodage. Yes, I know. I know. I know. 59 of Lutz. That is a real place was reported by several students at uh, Leelman Innovation Academy for yelling the word in class on Wednesday. When she was brought to the principal, Kanisha Garcia, who is black, Bodich continued to use the term. Garcia reported Bodich to the Human Resources Department, which immediately put the substitute teacher, I want to stress that, substitute on the do not use list. Setting up a time to review where they could they could set a date. She resigned. Voters was hired to substitute in a Pinellas County school on July 1st 
She worked in several schools with that incident, quote, until now. Leelman Innovation Academy is billed as a school that focuses on personalized learning. Students in grades 6 through 12, quote, take charge of their own learning, invent their own solutions, and develop self-management techniques while contributing to small group projects, like reporting the teacher for using the N-word. They solved that. They did. They fucking solved that. I'm sitting here trying to think what context <laughs> that could possibly be. And I'm not doing the thing where like, well, how did she mean it? No, it's it, absolutely not okay. But I'm trying to figure out what context there could possibly be to make someone think that could be okay. Like, like you know, where, how do we get from there to here? Yeah. Like, you just, you're, you know, you're at your job as a substitute teacher. At what point? Cause, cause do you repeatedly just start while there, the while there are and, a number of complete terrible people who will begin their day and just broadly flapping around through life, just N word, N word, Confederate flag, woohoo, every day, all day, without a thought, care in the world. Most people, very racist people, will wait until the not white people aren't around and then bust them out. The audacity, the, you are a substitute teacher and you are using the N word to the principal. What the living shit. I just like, were you sprinkling it into conversation? Were you just shouting it? Like what, what happened here? You're reading out, you know, lyrics to fuck you. What what were you doing? Doing some CeeLo? What what the fuck? And even then, like, I don't know about you. If I'm rapping along to say Jay-Z's 99 problems, that word's in there a lot, and I just skip it. You just you even just skip I'm it. I'm in the car by myself. It's because I am out. white as fuck. It's not ours white. Little tiny bit of of common fucking courtesy, and you'll have people. What always cracks me up is you have people that are like bent out of shape that Shuri calls a guy colonizer and Black Panther, and those same people will be like, "Why can't I say it to like my friends though?" Because you've never been the group out of power, you fucking idiot. People. Also, just the stones to get up in front of a room full of kids. Yeah. Who are black and just start using the slur at them. They know what that word means. I'm amazed. I you, you. I know what that word means by the time they're three. I'm amazed you walked out of that room in one piece. Because if they had rose up as one and smited you, you would have fucking deserved it. I just. <laughs> Teenag teenagers scare the living shit out of me. And they should. To quote Gerard Way. For a while, like when I was unemployed, my family was really pushing me to substitute teach. And I was like, me against a room full of teenagers, huh? No, no thank you. That's scary. <sighs> Let alone just let's just antagonize them. Well, we have we have more Florida. Yay. Um. This one comes to us. Uh, I'm a little torn on this one. We have some great mugshots, fantastic ones. On this one. I'm torn. And your terror is like, where the fuck is this going? We've talked about the subject of glitter on the show several times. Yeah. It is. It, many people have, have made this. I wasn't the first person to make this observation. Many people have said. It is the herpes of craft supplies. I love glitter. Once it is there, it is forever. Once glitter has been unleashed into an environment, you will find glitter there until the end of time. If you move, doesn't matter. You'll find that glitter in your new place somehow. It'll come with you. It's, it's, it's a curse. It's like a fucking, you know, like ancient uh read your fortune fucking curse goddamn shit 
favorite things about it. It's like fucking on high, the lo- like a pox from the Lord kind of glitter. So it's actually the eleventh plague, but it got edited out of the Bible. D- did you know? <laughs> right after the killing of the firstborn, everything you own covered in glitter. So did you know it can also be a felony? Two Florida women hit with felony charges after attacking man with glitter. And the the mugshots, those are amazing. They're like, yeah, we'd fucking do it again. Goddamn right we did. Two women are arrested after attacking. Attacking needs to be in quotes here. After attacking yeah. a man with several containers of glitter during a dispute at his Clearwater, Florida apartment. Caitlin O'Donovan, 27, and Sarah Franks, 29, arrived at the unidentified man's residence shortly before 3 a.m. Monday, where an argument ensued as he stood on his fence balcony. O'Donovan and Franks struck the man's head and torso with glitter. The article is killing me here. Struck with glitter. It's, It's a dust. Unless you mean a DVD of the Mariah Carey movie, you cannot strike anyone with glitter. Like, was this article written by the guy? Franks then climbed over the balcony fence as the victim went into his apartment and followed him inside. She threw more containers of glitter before opening the front door for O'Donovan, who tossed even more. So they're just filling this dude's apartment with glitter. Just everywhere. Just everywhere. Two women left the apartment before police arrived, were eventually found at Frank's home by tracing the vehicle they used to flee the scene. Flee the scene? Making this sound a lot worse than it could possibly have been. Authorities noticed there was glitter inside the car, which police said was still warm. Now, this is some terrible writing. Was the The car car still still warm warm or the glitter? Oh, this glitter's still warm. They've been here recently. Either that or somebody went to Hobby Lobby. It's hard to tell. Felony burglary with assaulter, but come on. Franks was also given a misdemeanor mischief charge because, according to police, she kicked a window while leaving the apartment until it broke. Which is promise you, if the tables were turned and a dude, two dudes did this to a girl. And that girl called the cops. They'd be like, obviously it was a prank. Why, why, why are you so upset about? This article. Who, who the fuck wrote this? The dude. Jose Martin. Yeah, Jose Martinez. They, they struck him with glitter. It, this he, poor he was man. Where's the GoFundMe? He was assaulted. They, 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 threw, they threw it all over his apartment. They broke one of his windows. It's, like, yeah, dude's going to lose his security deposit for sure. Oh, yeah. But assault? Now, something like this happens. Ellen, assault? Something like this happens. And this is not this is not just to happen, okay? These two women just not did not go out one night and say, hey, let's go throw glitter all over a guy. Cause that's a lot of glitter. And even I don't have that much just laying around. He did something, and he knows what he did. He earned that shit. And you know, it's, it's, they just did glitter. They didn't fuck up your car. They didn't cut your tires. No. They, they, they didn't set shit on fire. Saying, like, they're being charged with a felony. Come on. Yeah, that's, oh, you, we, can't, we can't let them do this to us. Is it shit. sounds like this dude needs to smile more. <laughs> the, the, Nobody likes a guy who can't take a joke. The write up is just fuck. Good God. It's no, no, God, no. It could happen okay. to you. Do you need, do you need like court appointed therapy for the trauma? <sighs> Now, that's not to say all of these things are, are always deserved. And there are some American behaviors, I, or at least behaviors I consider to be American, that we seem to be exporting. Um, 
this one's from China, and holy shit. F- fuck this. This is not how you do customer service. This is not how you... This is not. Woman goes on rampage at bridal salon after not getting her deposit back, cuts up 32 wedding dresses worth $11,000. Irate customer at a bridal salon in, in China tore through racks of wedding dresses, slicing them up with scissors after a dispute with the store over a $550 deposit. Customer, an unnamed woman in uh, Chongqing, a uh, city in southwest China, was filmed going through racks of wedding gowns with a pair of scissors in her hands. Um, according to Chinese media, the incident occurred at a bridal shop on January 9th. Um, they reported a woman ruined 32 dresses worth 11000 uh, The dispute arose after the store declined to return the woman's deposit of $550 for a wedding package. According to the store, the customer abruptly canceled the wedding package worth 1250 She booked on October 21st. All right. Tensions are high. You had a wedding going, and suddenly you, it's done. So you're yeah. already not in a good place. That I understand. However, they didn't do it. And when you signed a contract for the shit, you signed, and it said, look, no deposit back, because that, that's what the deposit's for. That's how that works. But even better, we she's on video and it went viral, of course. What she the audacity she's like, well, fuck you. I'm just gonna do this. They got her right on tape or video. There is no tape anymore. Got her snippet of snipping all of them, just walking down the line, just like bi- very business like too. She's like, well, fuck you. I don't know how you think you're gonna get away with that. Well, she's wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that, that'll cover it, sure. I don't know how you think you're going to get away with that. And yet weddings are fucking stressful. That is why for my second wedding, I fucked off to Hawaii and it didn't invite anybody. But... Ooh. Well, it's... it's like, this... you think you're not on the hook for that $11,000 now? Yeah, it's that mentality of, well... I can do this now and I'm not no. going to I'm not going to think this through. I'm just going to do this and it will be fine. Everything will be no, fine after this. It will not be fine, ma'am. Because I'm right. That's what it that's really what it comes down to. It's everything after this action doesn't matter because I'm right doesn't matter where in the world it is weddings make people insane oh yeah and like i don't it's i know that society has built up weddings as this it's a party Mm. you're throwing a party yeah have good food have good music don't be a dick look your best that's all you need it it's a party and people just lose their fucking minds. Like now, now you're on. You this is so much worse. What Jesus? Dumb shit. And I promise you, they're not going to deduct that five hundred fifty dollars from the eleven grand you now owe them. No. You don't get a store credit on that one. But uh, all right, this. Yeah, this is just baffling. We're gonna we're heading back to this continent to uh beautiful sunny Ontario. Um we have often had stories where someone has put their car through the ice. It happens a lot. It surprisingly more than it should. This is the first one we've ever had where someone took a selfie as they did it. That's just, this is just a picture. Look, just, just, just appreciate that. That shot right there. Find your vehicle. 
I have a pop up that yeah, I, can't I know you have to click vehicle final go away. Freaking ads. Oh, okay. um, Thank you. A driver in the Mattotic area seems to be unharmed after plunking their vehicle in the drink over the weekend, resulting in the bright yellow Scion TC being submerged in icy Rideau River. Critically, it appears they managed to document the occasion with a selfie as others rush to help them. To get that picture again. I would have made a TikTok personally. And, and we got video. Because, of course, there's video. And then she's, all right, she's fucking infuriating me. And this is why. All of these people are out there. She's on top of the car. She's going in. Trying to get things set up so they can, she is sinking. She's fucking sinking. And they're trying to help her before she goes in the icy river and freezes to fucking death. Even if you can swim, you'll freeze to fucking death. People are out there. They're trying to get a boat and shit over to her. And what's she doing? She's she's taking selfie of the situation. Uh, it's kind of a dick move. Yeah, there she is. I think she's. We're seeing her reach for. The, no, no. Is she going for her phone right now or? No, probably earlier. But yeah, it's a dick move. Like that, real close. You got to get the fuck off that ice. Right. You will die. Yeah. Like, you know, that, that I, I can I consider that a freak. It's a dick move. <sighs> I mean, on the one hand, I get it. You know, your car, that's that's turning a frown upside down. Your car is boring. <laughs> Maybe you're going to die. You might as well get a cool fucking selfie out of it that they can put at your funeral. But you get like one. You don't get to do the thing where you take 50 and use the best one. <laughs> you get one. And then you got to get the fuck off that ice. Like, I, I don't I don't want to be the dude that goes, you know, this generation. But is this like the new version of of, of the 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 playing the, the violins on the Titanic? Is that what this is? Maybe. All it goes down. The real question is, could Leonardo DiCaprio fit on the spoiler of that car with her? <laughs> it's a Scion TC. Oh, man. It's, <laughs> is, it, is it worth it to even get it out of the water? <laughs> and it's yellow. Yeah, I mean... Could be Honestly, like my little toy car, if it went into the bottom of the lake and they showed up with the cranes, I'd be like, man... I really feel like you've wasted a day of work here. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you, but. Uh, just you know, have a little concern, courtesy for the people trying to help you. Cause you're like, they're like, Hey, we're trying to hey. help you not die. Could you, could you could you I'm, I'm making a TikTok. <laughs> now I have to start over. God. honey you're gonna die here's another one where i had to check the date on because these things seem to happen repeat i'm like wait didn't this already no oh okay okay well also this one is a remarkable um mugshot because like we often say you can't decide how you look but you can decide some things about your appearance like your hair this dude made a decision about his hair not a good one, but that's the least of what's going on here. Tara's waiting. So it's just like, oh, I got to see this. Here you go. The, the, there you go. Happy birthday. Look at that hair. He that looks like if that one guy from Bare Naked Ladies tried to go in like a pop punk direction. <laughs> like if he tried to join like Newfound Glory. It's like a mohawk, but he didn't really want to commit. Yeah. It's just like, I want a mohawk, but I want to be able to brush it back out if I don't like it. I want a little funny mohawk. If you look at it straight on, it looks like a pinhead thing going on. What I um, really want is for my head to look like one of those mini milk cartons you got in school. He looks like an onion. Kind 
Yes. He looks like a fucking his onion head. Anyway, why we're oh, even talking? Why we're even talking about him? Senior Stone in Pot Brownie Mishap. Woman oh, 73 was unaware THC and baked goods. Group of senior citizens unknowingly consumed pot brownies that were brought to a community center card came by a 73 year old South Dakota woman who was unaware that her son had prepared the baked goods with THC butter. Now, this wasn't like he made it like, haha, mom. It's like he made the brownies. And then his mom was like, oh, he made brownies. I'll take this with me to the card game. Well, that's messed up. You don't just steal somebody's brownies. <laughs> that's messed up. That's rude, mom. You can't just steal shit. According to a problem cause affidavit, police dispatchers last Tuesday received several calls reporting, quote, possible poisonings of individuals who were at the Tabor County Community Center for a card game. <laughs> An investigation into the incident led me to believe that all the patients were under the influence of THC for a batch of brownies that were brought in. Now, I'm not saying these people never did, you know, pot at any point during their life. Sure. But it's kind of a surprise when you su you get you're a septuagenarian and all of a sudden you get hit by the Mary Janes. I mean that's a hell of a card game. <laughs> hey, hey, I Agnes. Agnes, have you ever noticed all of these hearts? These cards love us. <laughs> hey, you know what would be you know what would be fun if instead of dealing cards, we all we all ch switched dentures. <laughs> Let's all wear each other's dentures, Mom. There's a pandemic. Shh. We're gonna cure it right now. <laughs> Hildy's in the back, like everybody's her grandson. Here's twenty dollars. Here's twenty dollars. Here's twenty dollars. And then an hour later, the Denny's is overrun. <laughs> Good. Golden Corral, please. Okay. <laughs> um, a couple told police at the wet Tuesday weekly Tuesday night card game uh, after the several people eating the brownies, including themselves, they learned that Coronado's son. Had made had made the brownies that had been in Colorado over the past week and brought back products with marijuana. You can't do this yet. Like it's legal to buy it here. You can't just take it home with you. Right. It's not like legal to buy, but legal to own it. No, no, no. It's no. still possession. Yeah. Crazy Spruce. On the bright side, their glaucoma cleared up. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Some of them probably <laughs> felt great. It was like fucking cocoon for a minute in there. <laughs> it's another reference a lot of them aren't going to get. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank God this didn't happen in a bingo game. Oh, my God. Or somebody would have died. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Can you imagine, though, like, you're a dude, you go to Colorado, you buy some weed, you make yourself some brownies, you sleep till three in the afternoon, and then your brownies are gone. And you text your mom, and she's like, oh, yeah, thanks, honey, I brought them to the card game. Can you, um, like... That's like in the back of your head, you hear the dum dum da sting. Right, like your life flashes before your eyes. And your heart stops. Uh, <laughs> is arrested for possession of controlled drug or substance. Free on bond. He's scheduled for court appearance. I mean, just. God bless. You're going to get kicked out of mom's house. Yeah. Last one this week. Th this one. Oh, bless your heart. We've got dumb criminals, and then we've got dumb criminals. Tara, after you commit a crime, 
just gonna ask you here, just just blind blind ass. After you commit a crime, what's the most essential aspect of you just committed the crime? What do you need to do? I mean, hypothetically, mm. because obviously I have never committed a crime. Right. I don't know what you're implying. Um, I would think escape. You would think escape. You would be right. <laughs> These guys, however, thought pancakes. I mean, you know... <laughs> Armed robbery suspects arrested after stopping to eat at Denny's. That IHOP, sorry. That strawberry syrup is legit, okay? You can't get that in the store, and it makes me mad. So... Suspects who may be responsible for a recent string of robberies arrested on Tuesday after satisfying some cravings. The two men stopped by the restaurant following the alleged robbery of a family dollar store that was only several miles away. So you just ran, you just robbed the family dollar, which, oh, wow. You, you're so if you're stealing, everything's free. <laughs> you might as well go to Target. <laughs> and not the fucking family dollar. Like, that's, you're not paying. You're not getting a deal here. Oh, <laughs> that's not what stealing stealing is. There is no you don't need a deal. If you're if you're shoplifting groceries, you can go to Whole Foods. <sighs> it's all free. Two men stopped by the restaurant. Uh, the, the police say the two men were enjoying their meal when an officer spotted their vehicle outside and called in backup. The cop had probably got to be like, wait, no way. Dude, really? No fucking way. That's strawberry syrup, though, man. That might get me. <laughs> it's good shit. The men are suspected of robbing nine businesses, including other dollar stores and AutoZone stores. All right, for one thing, like, were they going for the cash box? Because I guess I could see that. Maybe, or maybe they just have self esteem issues. Yeah. Because, guys, yeah, set your sights higher. Like, price is no object when you're stealing. I. You've got to get the fuck away. You got to at least switch your car out before you set up for breakfast. Right? Like, I know that's not how they did it in Pulp Fiction, but that was fiction. It's in the title. It's in GTA. If you go commit a crime, you have to bring the car back, ditch the car and get another car. I mean, also, that's in Pulp Fiction, game. somebody married Quentin Tarantino. So yeah, that, that's... how plausible are we talking here? Yeah. The comments this week are going to be amazing. Oh, People were very mad at us about the glitter story. Well, too bad. Too bad. So yeah, I, a lighter week this week, but that was still the fucking IHOP. Sometimes you just need some good old fashioned fuckery without any bodily fluids. That's the first thing we learned, which shouldn't need to be thing you learn, but number one priority after committing a crime is to get away yes because if they find you after you have committed crime you lose that's how yeah. it works i've never even played gta and i know that just tara you never need to ever fuck it you don't care no just play skyrim it's way more fun and it doesn't have murdering prostitutes. <sighs> we learned that um, if it's legal in one place, it's not legal everywhere. You've got to check. Yeah. And also don't leave brownies where mom can get at them. And don't steal people's brownies that they just made. That's rude. <laughs> it's sort of like, you know, like, you know, sort of bouncing the scales almost immediately right there. 
just don't take people's food. I wonder if they've learned that lesson or they're either they learned that lesson or they learned maybe I should steal food more often. Yeah, that could go either way. <laughs> I'm just saying, laced or not, if I had a whole thing of brownies and someone took them, you better not come home. We've learned just because you're sure you're right does not mean everything that follows after that moment is okay. Mm -mm. You can't just go, but I was right. That, that doesn't, no one cares. Nope. Look. Just like on the internet, nobody gives a fuck if you're right. That is a life lesson, folks. You need to learn it and it, just bring it in. Let it become part of you. Being right doesn't matter. It doesn't change a goddamn thing. Nope. Because someday you will work for an idiot. Yep. And they will be wrong and you will have to do what they say anyway. Yeah. Because capitalism. Um... <laughs> We've learned that you can be assaulted by glitter. Fuck you. you can be, what was the word he used? Struck. 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 Struck by like, glitter. Yeah. This dude, like, I... <laughs> He's gotta be taking the piss with this, because otherwise... You know, like, if it's, like, the real legit kind of glitter that's expensive you could scratch your cornea he may, fucking mentions you get cornea scratch and ulceration if you go to jail it's bad but did he you right. could have but did he but did he could have mm-hmm and finally, we've learned, uh, I don't know why we have to keep telling you slur. Don't do the slurs. Why would you, why do you even want to? Because someone told, it's because someone told you no. In the year of Betty White 2022, I shouldn't, we shouldn't have to still be saying this. It, and it, by the way, we're doing the show on Martin Luther King Day. It, it occurs to me. It's like, aren't racists just seem to be like the biggest fucking toddlers. Because you don't tell me no. I yeah. you said no, so I do the thing. Dude, why do you think we're still in a pancetta? Still. You can't tell me what to do. Nobody tell me what to do. I'm not getting a shot. If if we're still in this I know we're gonna we're we're working toward it's becoming an endemic instead of a pandemic. Eventually yeah. we're still gonna we're gonna have to deal with this for a while. But if we're still in a panic pandemic by next year, God damn, why are we even doing this? Why are I we just even doing the show? See Denver. No, I've been here for two years now. 